Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up as we discuss vaginal health. That's right, how to take care of ourselves. We could talk about dropping it like it's hot, things to put on it, in it, spraying on it, inserting, everything we can talk about and many of us think it's taboo which I think is quite odd because many of you have children many of you are intimate and we don't want to have those discussions not maybe intentionally but maybe because we grew up not having the knowledge or not having anyone to speak to us about vaginal health but we're going to talk about it now it's all coming up next is bunny those of you who are new to the channel once again welcome the platform of this channel is movie and television show reviewing but i am adding more and more playlists to the channel so this is part of the health and wellness playlist if you haven't watched the video concerning vaginal steaming and detox pearls my opinions about that make sure to check out the comments and i have the link below so now to discuss it can you name your external genitalia can you give me all of the parts your anatomy the terminologies some of you are probably saying vagina some of you are probably saying cervix okay but that's a shame because many of us don't know our anatomy our external anatomy our reproductive anatomy and it's okay to blush about and kind of giggle about but after today we at least want to understand our genitalia and our anatomy you would be surprised how many people that are in their 50s and 60s still refer to their genitalia as down there and it blows me away because you want to be knowledgeable if you're not knowledgeable of that how do you expect the most important thing which is the vaginal health cleaning properly making sure that you understand sexually what's going on all of that is important. It's okay to talk about it. We hear about it in movies, we hear it in songs, yet discussions, or in my opinion, enough discussions aren't happening. So back to my previous question, can you name all of the parts to your blank? <laughs> okay, ladies, I'll take you out of your misery. I am going to have some photos following this clip and I'm going to have some narration so we can understand our external anatomy a little bit better. Majority of the time people use the term vagina to describe the entire female genital region, all right, between the legs, but this is incorrect. Let's start using the correct terminology. Your vulva is the correct name for describing your external parts of your female genitalia, okay? This includes your clitoral hood, your clitoris, your labia majora, your lab labia minora, your urethral opening, your vagina opening, your vulva vestibule, right? All of this is your vulva. Now, I know some of you are saying, wow, I didn't know that. That's okay. We're learning today. <laughs> All right. So now let's discuss the either functionalities or what each part is. Okay. Now your vagina, okay, is the tube between your vulva and the cervix. This tube is the connection between your uterus and the outside world, okay? The vagina is specifically where babies come out of, where they exit, um, insertion uh, for intercourse, where your menstrual blood exits. That is your vagina. That's so important to know. Okay, so now we're getting to the labia majora and minora. So the majora or the outer 
folds of the skin or lips, outer lips on the side of the opening of your vagina, okay? Now, with young women who have gone through puberty and adult women, this is where the hair is growing, okay? The menorah is in between the majora and the vulva vestibule, okay? So it's it's in between those two areas, but your vulva uh, vestibule is it surrounds the opening of the vagina. So you start to notice the change in the tissue and how that can vary. And now this can vary from each person, colors and shapes. Not everyone is the same when it comes to shapes and colors. Okay, ladies, we got to talk about something really, really important, okay, which is our sexual orgasm location. It's one of the locations that has a lot of nerves connected to this area and having your sexual orgasm. Majority of women have their orgasm via the clitoris. Very low percentages of women actually reach orgasms vaginally, meaning via your vagina. Now we talked about where the vagina is located, right? You remember it is the tube that there we go. Now, you know, okay. So the clitoris is the most common area. It is the primary source for female sexual pleasure. So don't feel bad if you're not having vaginal orgasms. This is your primary source for sexual enjoyment and reaching your peak. Okay. So that is the most common area for you to have your sexual orgasm, okay? It's all right, we can talk about it. Now your urethral opening, okay, which is the small dot that you see <laughs> that's above the vagina, this is where your urine comes out, okay? A lot of people think that the urine is coming from either the clitoris or the vagina, but that is incorrect. This is where your urine exits. Now for men, it's where their urine exits and their sperm, okay? Now the clitoral hood is the small flap of skin that surrounds and protects the sensitive tip of the clitoris. And then we go into the bulbs that contain erectile tissue that swells with blood during female sexual arousal. Now, let's talk about the internal. You have your cervix, which divides your vagina and your uterus, and it's located right between the two. It looks like a donut with a tiny hole in the middle, and this hole connects your uterus and your vagina, and it lets menstrual blood out and sperm in. Your cervix is what stretches open, dilates during childbirth. Now, your uterus is pear-shaped, um, it's muscular. It's a muscular organ about a size of your fist. And sometimes it's called the womb because it's where the fetus grows during pregnancy. Now, during sexual arousal, the lower part of your uterus lifts towards your belly button. Your fallopian tubes are two narrow tubes that carry eggs from your ovaries to your uterus. And sperm travels through them to try to fertilize your egg. And your ovaries are where you store your eggs. They also produce hormones, which uh, includes estrogen, uh, testosterone, progesterone. Uh, these hormones control things like your menstrual and your pregnancy. During puberty, your ovaries start to release an egg each month. Um, and it does so until menopause. So sometimes your ovaries release more than one egg. If you noticed, I haven't even started to talk about the hygiene part because you have to understand your anatomy, your external, your internal, and knowing its placements, where they are, and its functionalities because that will be the start in understanding what is needed to take care of it. You can't just go and jump into looking at products for hygiene and you don't know what's going on with your body and what is quote unquote normal. So the last part is discussing discharge. What is it? Why is it happening? 
what are some of the colors that are normal and some of the colors and things that may rise concerns and things that you need to talk to your GYN about. So let's get to that part. And after we understand normalcies of discharges, then we can start to talk about hygiene, products, and so forth. Women who usually have spotting and irregular cycles will see a little bit of this color uh, due to hormonal changes or birth control. Keep in mind, as I discuss different ranges of color, that pay attention to textures and smells when it's not part of your regular discharge monthly routine, okay? Now, a variety of white shades from eggshell to cream can be normal unless your discharge, once again, is accompanied by textures or smells um, that you're not used to. It's simply natural lubrication, keeping your vaginal tissue healthy, and it's min minimizing friction during sex. So a creamy to milky white and sometimes a light a uh, yellow discharge is normal, okay? It's more normal than you think. Colors can change varying your diet, medications, uh, hormonal imbalances. It's textures, textures and smells that we want to pay attention to. If it's not normal and something that you see every month, this is something to bring to your attention of your GYN. So now we are getting to the hygiene part of the video but how do you feel how do you feel now that you've become more aware of your anatomy and discharge colors and what's normal what to look out for do you feel better about that hearing that information because just jumping to hygiene wouldn't make any sense okay so let's talk about the vagina it is self cleaning when a lot of women hear that they think that's not enough and that sounds dirty and what do I do? So the vagina doesn't need any assistance when it comes to cleaning the inside, all right, of your vagina. Now, I know that you've probably heard from your GYN to wash your vagina with water and immediately you think, that's disgusting. Uh, everything that happens with my vagina, why would I just wash it with water? And me, I am a germaphobe. I am so clean. I clean stuff all the time. I mean, it, it, everything's immaculate when it comes to cleanliness because I don't play when it comes to being clean. But what did we learn about our anatomy and where and what your vagina is? Do you remember, right? It's the tube. When it comes to cleaning what's around your vagina, the opening, that is the part that you can clean with uh, certain soaps. Now, this is where you need to pay attention, okay? So, vaginal washes can mess up pH, and I'll go into the photos to explain that, but keep in mind, that your vagina, okay, what we learn about the anatomy, should be washed with water. The other genitalia that surrounds your vagina externally can be used with, I think, my opinion, with all natural, natural ingredients that create foam to clean your vagina. What I use personally is Dr. Bronner's Castile Soap, okay? And it is made from all natural ingredients. And that is what you use to clean the exterior of your vulva. Your vagina should be washed with water. Do not think that it, that's dirty, but learning the anatomy, okay, and what we've learned, that is the part that your doctors are talking about. Vaginal washes and uh, those products that have a lot of scents in them and chemicals stay away. Now, I know you're probably thinking, okay, well, Bunny, if it, I should stay away from it and it's not recommended by my GYN, why do they sell it? You tell me. <laughs> you tell me. 
A lot of women use it and still have symptoms, still have odor and don't understand what's going on. What is going on is that they are throwing off their pH balance, which I will discuss following this. But your vagina has good bacteria and bad bacteria that coexist. And that pH balance, that's what that means. Making sure that there's a good balance of good and bad within your vagina. Now look, your vagina is not going to have uh, this rosy smell all day. I don't care what you put on it. I don't care if you use panty liners. Naturally throughout the day, your vagina is cleaning, is self-cleaning. You are having minimal discharges throughout the day, lubrication. So you are gonna have your natural scent per se. Now we're not talking about foul, knock you down smells, okay? That is something to where you need to discuss with your GYN because there may be an imbalance when it comes to your pH. Please understand that cleaning your vagina properly, using water to clean your vagina, and using a natural or organic product that in my opinion has naturally foaming ingredients or a natural Castile soap, um, is, it, I think is wonderful for cleaning your vulva. Now that you know what that means. So when there is an imbalance, when things are wrong, when there's an odor, this can mean that you have bacteria buildup that has not been cleaned, that is existing in your vagina, vagina, creating an odor that's not your normal vaginal smell, okay? So let's get into some more discussion and let me explain a little bit more to help you out, okay? So your pH balance that we see here, this can result in infections such as bacterial vaginosis or, or thrush, um, which can cause symptoms including itching, irritation, and abnormality. So the range um, can go from 3.8 to 4.5. When you use soaps or harsh chemicals, you can throw off this pH, vaginal washes, okay? Um, your vagina is self-cleaning. Now, always remember that you want to wipe and clean front to back. You don't wanna pull any bacteria that's coming from your anus to your vagina, which can cause infection. Remember to clean your vagina accordingly and to pat dry. Don't allow water to settle and stay there, which can give you bacterial infections, okay? I hope that this video helped you, that it helped bring some light to maybe some things that you didn't know. And if you already knew and you just got a refresher, great, communicate, have these discussions. If you don't agree, let's have a healthy debate in the comments. I'm always open to listening to your experiences and maybe some things that are on your mind. Um, it's a blessing, thank the Lord, that I've never had any types of infections or yeast infections or anything like that. Um, but this is due to education and learning about your anatomy and what is what. The more you know, the better you can take care of yourself. Also consider that things and items that you're using, contraceptives, can have negative effects as well. Many women are allergic to latex condoms. If you notice that after sexual intercourse with condoms that you are having unlikely discharges, monitor when that happens. If you're having unlikely discharges and uh, pain or anything like that after intercourse, you may be allergic. And a lot of women don't know that. But if you pay attention and if you do your research, clear as day on the box, it says that the latex may cause female genitalia to have allergic reactions and men as well, okay? That's why some people, they when they go to the hospital, they have to let the staff know that they're, they ask you, do you have any allergens to latex? It's so much more that we could go into. If there's anything additionally that you would like for me to talk about, please put it into the comments. That is why I've added this health and wellness playlist 
to the channel, all right? To have these talks. Let it not be taboo, let it not be hush hush. Don't feel as if you're embarrassed about anything because it's your body, right? It's something that, it's your temple, it's something that you wanna take care of. So if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe please subscribe and i don't know if you notice i subscribe to whomever subscribes to me make sure that you have the settings so you can see that i'm following you back because if that setting is not on there to where you can't see who's following you back it'll look like i'm not following you back okay so make sure that you have that setting on there and also follow me on instagram at the same profile name official bun underscore e can't wait to see you next time bye <laughs>